I don't have a, because of traumatic event at 10, I don't have any memory prior to 10. So you kind of blocked it all out? Yeah, I think it's because it was so traumatic. It's like the rest is a blur beyond 10. It's almost like my life started at 10 years old. Yeah. And so, that trauma at 10 was you get a, you nearly get killed by a chimp? Yeah. How yeah. did that? How's that? <clears throat> about? Yeah, it's a good question, Burton on Trent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in a jungle somewhere. It's mm -hmm. like... It was, um, the circus had turned up into, in, uh, had come into town that day. We were going out for, we just, actually we were going out for a swim. I was 10 years old, my brother and his best mate. And then, you know, the, the circus had turned up just between sort of our house and the swimming bus. Circus had pulled up in town. So um, we were drawn to that, you know, I mean, kids for God's sake. And uh, straight away we asked, you know, can we have a look around? They were like, yeah, yeah, you know, help yourselves. There was no health and safety in 1980. And um, before I knew it, I was in the big top. And um, I kind of lost my brother and his best mate. And I was drawn to this gap in the side of the, the other side of this tent. And I went over to it, opened it. The, the sun hit me in the eyes, blurred, for, blurred my vision for a couple of minutes. And as it cleared, I saw something in front of me that was just out of this world. And that was a baby chimp. And I was in love with Tarzan. You know what I mean? I was brought up with Tarzan. I think I'd been watching it that day anyway. You know, I'd watched it every day, summer holidays. And in front of me, that was like, that was like a woman seeing George Clooney naked. <laughs> it was my little piece of Hollywood. You know what I mean? It was Cheetah. Cheetah was there and I was like drawn to this creature. And I went over and, and I, before I knew it, I stood over it. Looked down and this little creature then looked up at me, beautiful brown eyes. And uh, it sounds weird, but it was, we connected. And... Um, and then it started picking food off the floor. So it's passing this food up to me. And I just thought, fuck it, I'm not I mean, that. It's disgusting. So I was like chucking it over my shoulder. And then uh, it seemed like a lifetime that was going on. And then all of a sudden, that serenity of that moment was, was, was broken like a fighter jet cutting through the sky as I heard this roar. And I looked in the background. We were in this in, sort of in open area, but it was enclosed with trucks and stuff like that. And there was movement in the shadows. And the shadows very quickly turned from shadows into what was clearly mummy or daddy. It was about 50, 50, 60 kilogram chin. I didn't get a fucking chance to weigh it, but it was, <laughs> it was fucking big. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stole on saying, let me weigh it. Let me just weigh you before you attack me. <laughs> um, and this thing's coming at me, Mac 10, and I'm thinking, fuck, I'm like a deer in the headlights. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, I was brought up with cats and dogs. This is a roaring fucking grown chimp coming at me, Mac 10. It's going mental. And then this thing, just at the point, I'm thinking I need to get out of the way, make a run for it. This thing pounces through the air. And it was almost like the blue sky turned to black as this thing landed on my chest, pinned me to the floor, and it's just going fucking mental. The first fist came down, knocked all the wind out of me, second fist, third fist, and the next thing his teeth started coming into me, like biting away. And I can remember looking up at this chimp sat on my chest. That there was blood, you know, in its teeth. It wasn't, wasn't um, the chimp's blood, it was my blood. And uh, I thought... I could see my life flashing in front of me. I was only 10, it didn't take long. Um, and it was in that moment that I knew I had to do something, other, otherwise I was going to die. And it was, it was in that moment that fight or flight, and, um, or freeze. And uh, I managed to dislodge the chimp slightly, and I got a knee up to my chest and managed to kick the thing off me. And then uh, that gave me a few seconds and I managed to scurry out of there and then the chimp got to its feet and it came at me Mac 10 for the final attack. And honestly, it was like, the, you know, like you see in the films, it was like that far away from me and the chain caught it. And uh, in that moment, the whole place erupted. But for me, and that's why I talk about that moment so much because there's a few things in that. You know, first of all, childhood trauma is the worst. You know, one of the worst traumas you can have. Um, secondly, that was my first break point, and that's the reason you sat here. This is the Breakpoint Academy. You've got the chimp to thank. <laughs> and that's what the first book's about, Breakpoint. Yeah, the, well, the, 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 the first book is about Breakpoint. It's about the theory of Breakpoint. The theory of Breakpoint is the, that to achieve anything in life, you have to take short-term dis short discomfort for long-term gain. For me on that day, short-term discomfort was taking a fight to a chimp, and the long-term gain was me living. And that's the thing, when I use that as an, an analogy for life, we're wired to take short-term comfort, whether it's drink, drugs, relationships, work, everything, we're wired to take the shortcut. But that leads to long-term pain. The more shortcuts we take, and the more certain, you know, easy comforts we take, it leads to a life of pretty much 
next to nothing. And you have to know that to change anything to, in life, to, ach to achieve anything, then you must cross that bridge of short-term discomfort. And you have to have that link to a goal. And there's a whole process. But that was my first break point. And also the fact it taught me at a young age that regardless of your situation, you have choices. Mm -hmm. Before that experience, till then after it, is this is what shaped you your whole life? Did you become more insecure, paranoid, angry, or did you become more into your shell? No, mate. I, did it change you completely? The first, you know, I was angry. I was, I was a troubled little kid after that. You know, it, was, it set me on a path of destruction. It's like hindsight's a wonderful thing, but it never won any wars. You know what I mean? We can sit back and reflect now, but then, you know, you don't know at the time because when you have intimate, when you have trauma like that, you lock away that intimate trauma. It's like a survival technique, inner survival technique to get you through the short term. So you lock away the intimate trauma, but that, that intimate trauma needs to be dealt with at some point. If you don't deal with it, it, it sticks with you for the rest of your life. And for me, looking back, I then understand that that, that, um, that really did change the path of my life. And I was, a, I was an angry little kid, got into a lot of trouble with the police, ended up on remand at one point. And that was a turning point for me. That was like, you know, and I thought everyone was like, he's going to end up in prison for the rest of his life. So people were kind of labelling you then that yeah, you were a loose yeah, cannon. Exactly. And this what? was the first, it wouldn't be, you know, I'd end up inside for the rest yeah. of my life. And that was the point as well when my mum, bless her, she, her life was falling apart. My dad had left financial, she was in financial ruin because of that. And she had three kids to bring up. And at that, at that moment, she knew how much I needed. And she bought, you know, she, she focused all her attention on me. And she concentrated all that energy and pushed me into like on my, um, you know, my cross country running, all my, you know, exercise, everything. And, and then at that point as well, 14 years old, my passion to join the military.